So you're thinking about buying or selling a home in Foley, Daphne, one of the surrounding areas, because we're going to talk about something really important. Okay, so I need to warn you about a new, let's just call it a scam, that happens to be, or dishonest dealings that happen to be running rampant throughout the real estate industry right now. Whether you are buying or selling, this absolutely could affect you. So you need to stick around to the end of this video because I have some real important information for you that could affect you directly. So let's get to it right now. Hey guys, first time to the channel, hit that like button, subscribe button, and ring that little bell so you could be one of the first ones to learn everything there is to learn about what it's like to actually live at the beach. So listen, one of the most common questions we get from our sellers nowadays is, do I still have to pay a buyer's agent commission? I've heard I don't have to. Well, here's the deal. Whether you've heard this right now or whether you heard this five years ago, the answer has always been the same. You've never had to. I mean, the truth is you were never actually paying the commission directly. Your agent was just sharing their commission with the buyer's agent for bringing someone to the table, for bringing a buyer to the table. So that that's the truth. That's the way it always was. So technically, no, you don't have to pay a buyer's agent's commission, but here's why you might want to think about doing so. Consider yourself the buyer and consider it from the buyer's perspective. They're already covering moving costs, closing costs, and everything else that comes along with buying a property. Many buyers don't have the extra cash after they have all their expenses to pay their agent directly. By not allowing commission to be paid to the buyer's agent, then you're basically limiting your pool of buyers. Just imagine that, you know, if everybody else in the world is doing it and, you know, they're paying out a buyer's agent, so the only buyers coming forward are those who can actually afford to pay their agent out of their own pocket. This decreases the demand for your property. Less demand means less exposure. And less exposure means you might not get the top dollar that you're looking for out of your property. And listen, I agree the system might not be perfect, but it's the same exact system that you benefited from whenever you bought the property in the first place. And it's the same system that you'll most likely benefit from when you buy your next property. So what's the answer to the big question? The answer is no, you do not have to pay a buyer's agent commission, but not doing so could put you in a competitive disadvantage, big time. Something to think about. So recently, the National Association of Realtors made some pretty big changes after they were had been sued by the DOJ, which has caused quite a stir. Now, compensation details have been removed from the MLS, creating a lot of confusion. Now, this uncertainty in the field is the perfect breeding ground for less than scrupulous activities. You see, the commissions in a real estate transaction used to be pretty simple and clear. But that all changed when the National Association of Realtors came in and said that the commissions had to be removed from the MLS. So let me explain to you the way this used to work. So let's say that you had a $500,000 house. And let's say that you and the listing agent, you as a seller, were going to pay a 6% commission. The way it used to be would be the listing agent would then split this 50-50 with the buyer's agent. So this would be someone who would be, bring a buyer and make an offer on your property. So they would split this 50-50. So, so the commission on this would be $30,000, which split in two would be $15,000 each for each agent. Now, of course, they have all their fees that come out of that. They have, you know, so, so on and so forth. So this is the way that it used to be, and this is pretty cut and dry. So in this scenario, the buyer never actually had a say-so in how much the buyer's agent was actually paid. So this part of it was not negotiable as far as the buyer was concerned. It was, however, negotiable with the listing agent. 
because the listing agent is actually the one who is paying the buyer's agent's commission in this scenario. That's the way it used to be. The percentage of 6% would be listed on the MLS so that everybody in the world actually knew how much everybody was making. Now, let me show you the way that it will actually work now. Let's say once again, you are selling a $500,000 house. Now you and the listing agent will sit down and decide what he is going to make or she is going to make. So let's just say that they agree to 3%. So now they take your listing and they also, you, you will also have a conversation as to whether or not you want to pay a buyer's agency commission or give any kind of, say, $15,000 allowance to be used any kind of way that the, that, uh, the buyer wants to use it. You, you can have a conversation. There are, there are a lot of options that you have in order to do this. So now, let's say that a buyer's agent now brings a buyer and they want to make an offer on your house. So what will happen at this point is the buyer's agent has a, an agency in agreement with the buyer that they are going to make a certain percentage. And let's just say that that is 3%. So when the buyer's agent actually writes up the offer and makes the offer for your $500,000 house, whatever they offer on that, they will put in the offer that the, they are requesting that the seller actually pay the buyer's agent, agent C, excuse me, 3% of, say, the sales price. Again, let, let's just say that the buyers, uh, that, that the seller of this property decides that they do not want to pay 3% to, uh, of the sales price to the buyer's agent. So now let's just say they say they're only going to pay 2%. Well, now it's up to the buyer's agent to decide whether they want to just take the 2% or whether they want to go back to their buyer and say, we agreed on 3%, so they're going to pay me 2%, so you have to pay me 1%. And that's a conversation that will have to be had uh, before the offer is ever finalized. So you can see in this scenario and, and also uh, going back to the MLS, the buyer's agency compensation or commission is not allowed to be listed on the MLS anymore. So they don't, so when your buyer's agent goes to show you a property, they have no idea whether they're going to actually get paid or not by the seller. So that's a conversation that has to be had. Now I understand this is all quite confusing, but it does, however, lay the groundwork for the fact that everybody involved actually knows what everybody's getting paid once the offer is accepted. Yeah, I know. Pretty confusing, right? Now, imagine that you're sitting in your living room and you're talking to a real estate agent about selling your house. Better yet, you're sitting in your grandmother's house talking about selling uh, your grandmother's house with a real estate agent. And they start talking about their commission rate, saying that they'll take the listing at 5% and that this works out for everybody and it's going to be great and fantastic and there's unicorns and butterflies everywhere. And they also tell you that don't worry about the buyer's agent, that the, the buyer will actually pay the agent whenever they buy your property. Now this setup isn't straightforward anymore because the MLS you cannot list the commission being paid to the buyer's agent on the MLS. So nobody really knows what's going on. And because it's not listed on the MLS, this could lead to some misleading stuff 
um, basically some hidden fees, you know, things of that nature. I mean, it, it could potentially lead down the road, road to disaster. Because let's think about it this way. Let's say that some dishonest person does come in and and they take, you know, they tell you they're going to list your house for 5% and then don't worry about the buyer's agent. You know, the buyer's agent will be paid by the buyer. And then the buyer's agent comes in, um, brings a buyer to the table. They write up a contract and and then uh, they say, oh, yeah, the buyer's agent is going to pay the, the commission to the buyer. Now, when you get to the closing table, you find out you've paid 5% to the listing agent and the buyer's agent was paid by the buyer at a rate of 3%. There's a total of 8% that's been paid out on this property and you had to eat five of it. Now to me, in my book, this is unethical. This is not something that should be done. The whole reason behind the initial lawsuit was for transparency. It was to be transparent 100% throughout the entire transaction of a real estate deal. Quite frankly, in my opinion, this has done the opposite of that. The DOJ has said that they have resolved this, that all of this will prevent steering, which will show you what steering is. But in fact, in my opinion, it will create it. Buyers now can tell their agent who's representing them that they only want to see properties where the seller is offering compensation to the buyer's agent. And this could create a whole big old mess. At our brokerage, we started implementing these changes really early on. And quite frankly, it's, it's, been, it's been some sort of a mess. Agents and clients are struggling to understand the new rules. The commission used to be straightforward where it was split between the agents. Basically what happened is that a listing agent agreed to a certain percentage to sell the property and then they took their percentage and they split it with the buyer's agent who was bringing the buyer to the table. Someone who prides themselves on transparency and honesty it infuriates me to see this happening, to be quite honest with you. The media hasn't helped either. Spreading misinformation about commission structures and how you know real estate agents just make all this money for doing no work at all. So listen, what we've done is we have dug into these new rules and regulations so that we understand them completely and we wanted to pass the knowledge on to you so that you would not get taken advantage of. I mean, we're always looking out for your best interest. Here's the deal. If you're working with an agent, whether you're buying a house or selling a house, especially if you're selling a house, you need to make sure that everything is written out completely, 100% clear, so that you understand it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Ask about the commission. Ask about understand who's paying for what and where it's going and where it shows up on these forms and don't let anyone just glass over the details and listen up sellers you need to know exactly what you're signing make sure the listing agreement specifies the commission and what it covers and everything be thorough ask questions and ensure complete transparency if you sign a listing agreement saying that you agree to six percent and then the buyer's agent act, you know, shows up with an offer of that the buyer's willing to pay their commission of 3%, so you don't, you don't have to pay them as a buyer's agency. You need to make sure that it's written in there somewhere that you're not going to pay 6% if that happens. Listen, all this boils down to, at the end of the day, finding a trustworthy and transparent agent for you to get the absolute best deal you can possibly get whether you're buying or selling your house is essential to you we will always be up front with you about our services and what's included in those and what we actually charge so whether you're looking to buy or sell in the orange beach gulf shores area or any of the surrounding areas baldwin county alabama period be sure to pick up that phone give us a call shoot us a text send us an email we'd love to help you and we will help you navigate the landscape and ensure that you're not falling for any misleading information. So whether you decide to use us or not, be sure and do your own research. Find out everything you can about the person that you're going to trust with your money. Be sure to ask for everything in writing. How you choose to handle your real estate transaction is completely up to you and you don't have to settle for second best. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe button, and ring that little bell if you want to learn everything there is to learn about what it's like to actually live at the beach. You know, the beach life. 
Be sure and watch some of our other videos. And until next time, we hope to see you around town.